the northern coast of the Noto Peninsula. This is the worst affected area right now. Powerful earthquakes can have the most unexpected consequences. And I don't mean tsunamis. Everyone knows about those. But what recently happened in Japan shocked even the experts. Satellite images revealed astonishing changes along the coastline of the Noto Peninsula after the massive 7.6 magnitude earthquake that struck on January 1st, 2024. Overnight, the shoreline extended nearly 250 meters. The seabed itself rose out of the water, revealing brand new beaches where there had been none before. In some places, the ground rose four meters high and shifted sideways by more than one meter. A small island in northern Japan may have disappeared after being worn away by waves. It was a disaster, yes. But in Japan, disasters have a strange way of rewriting the map itself. Take the case of the missing island. Off the northern coast of Hokkaido, an uninhabited rocky outcrop once stood just 500 meters from the village of Sarufutsu. Locals called it Esambe Hanakita Kojima. Fishermen had known it since the 1970s, and scientists explored it in 1987. But then it vanished, completely. No explosion, no storm, no warning, just gone. Experts believe the island was slowly worn away by wind and waves, until one day nothing remained above sea level. Photos of the coastline before and after tell the story. Once, a small island stood on the horizon. Now, there's only open sea. What's most surprising is that no one noticed right away. Two whole months passed before anyone realized an entire island was missing. It wasn't until author Hiroshi Shimizu, researching a sequel to his illustrated book about Japan's hidden islands, visited the area that the disappearance came to light. He alerted the local fishing cooperative, which sent boats to search for it. They found only a few scattered rocks barely visible above the water. The island never reappeared. And yet, while parts of Japan's land vanish, others seem to rise out of the ocean as if summoned by the Earth itself. In late October 2023, a submarine volcano erupted near Japan's Ogasawara Islands in the Western Pacific. By November, the eruptions had grown so intense that they pushed an entirely new island above the surface, a 100 meter wide mass of black volcanic rock just south of Yoto Island. The volcano had literally poured an island into existence, and scientists identified it as among the newest observed volcanic islands. From space, the new island named Nijima, meaning New Island in Japanese, was clearly visible, standing about 20 meters high. But experts disagreed on its fate. Some predicted it would quickly erode under the pounding waves. Others believed it was still growing, fed by the lava flows below. Either outcome was possible. Still, this wasn't an isolated event. Japan's seas are full of newborn islands. Submarine volcanoes regularly raise new patches of land, many of which vanish again within months. Sometimes these new islands merge with older ones, changing the map entirely. It happened in 2021, when an underwater volcano called Fukutoku Okanoba erupted and a new island briefly formed near Iyoto. Nishinoshima, a separate volcano, continues to grow. That island continues to expand today, growing layer by layer with each eruption. Scientists explain that these volcanic islands are born in violent underwater explosions. When magma meets seawater, it cools and shatters into fragments that pile up until they rise above the surface. The longer the eruption, the larger and sturdier the island becomes. And Japan, sitting directly on the Pacific's Ring of Fire, is the perfect stage for such creation and destruction. The Ring of Fire stretches 40,000 kilometers in a vast horseshoe shape around the Pacific Ocean, from South America's southern tip up through North America's west coast, across the Bering Strait, past Japan and down toward New Zealand. It holds nearly two-thirds of all the world's volcanoes, between 750 and 900 in total. Japan alone has 111 active volcanoes, roughly 10% of the planet's total. With that much activity, it's no wonder new islands constantly appear here. But the same tectonic forces that build land can also tear it apart. About 90% of all earthquakes, including the strongest ones ever recorded, occur along this fiery boundary. 
Japan sits at the intersection of four tectonic plates, making it one of the most seismically active places on Earth, a living laboratory for the birth and death of islands. Yet volcanic islands are not exclusive to Japan. In 2013, a massive 7.7 magnitude earthquake struck southwestern Pakistan. Moments later, a mound of mud appeared in the Arabian Sea, about a kilometre from the coast. It was an astonishing sight, 80 metres long and 20 metres high, formed by a mud volcano. Gas, sand and water erupted from beneath the seabed, pushed upward by shifting tectonic plates. Reporters compared the scene to Atlantis rising from the deep. The island even contained flammable gas pockets that ignited when exposed to fire. Similar islands have appeared and disappeared in the Arabian Sea many times, one after the 1945 earthquake, again in 1999 and in 2011. They usually vanish within a year, eroded back into the ocean once the pressure subsides. That raises a fascinating question. If a new piece of land suddenly appears from the sea, can life take hold there? History says yes. The Hawaiian Islands, for instance, were born from volcanic eruptions just like these. Over time, life found a way. Scientists believe spores, moss, and seeds arrived on the wind, floating across vast oceans, or caught in the feathers of migrating seabirds. Slowly, the barren black lava turned green, plants took root, birds followed, and eventually, entire ecosystems emerged. If that can happen in the middle of the Pacific, 3,000 kilometers from the nearest continent, it can certainly happen much faster on a new Japanese island, surrounded by life on all sides. Interestingly, not all of Japan's islands were born from volcanoes. About 15 million years ago, tectonic movements pulled part of the Eurasian continent eastward, separating it from the mainland and forming what is now the Sea of Japan. The archipelago we know today was shaped both by that ancient rift and by ongoing volcanic activity far out in the ocean. But not every island lasts. Some dissolve back into the sea within months. It depends on what they are made of. Islands composed of ash and loose rock are fragile, easily eroded by waves. Those made of hardened lava, however, can endure for centuries. When a volcano erupts continuously, its lava solidifies into a tougher, more stable surface, an island that can withstand the ocean's assault. That leads to another question. Who owns these newborn islands? International maritime law sets some clear rules. Any new landmass within 19 kilometers of a country's coastline automatically belongs to that nation. Islands that appear within 320 kilometers of existing territory can also be claimed as part of a country's exclusive economic zone. But if an island rises beyond that distance, ownership becomes a race, a literal race to plant a flag. History offers examples. In Antarctica during the 20th century, nations rushed to state claims by building outposts and patrol stations, trying to prove effective control over the land. Even today, Denmark's elite Sirius Dog Sled Patrol traverses the icy wilderness of northern Greenland each year simply to reaffirm the country's territorial presence, an effort of endurance, not conquest. Claiming a small island in the middle of the ocean, though, is far trickier. You can't just sail there, stick a flag in the ground and declare ownership. You have to prove you can maintain it, protect it, and use it. And Japan has plenty of new land to ponder. In a recent recalculation using advanced digital mapping, scientists discovered that Japan actually has 14,125 islands, more than twice the official number recorded in 1987. That's 7,000 more than anyone realized. Most of these aren't newly born volcano islands, but small landforms that went undetected until modern technology made them visible. The total area of Japan hasn't changed, but its geography just became far more intricate. For scientists, every new island is a gift. Each one offers a rare opportunity to study how life begins from nothing, to watch in real time as barren rock turns into a living ecosystem. That's why research teams regularly visit these newborn islands, documenting every stage of their transformation while taking extreme care not to contaminate them with seeds or organic material. The goal is to see nature create life unaided. But humans aren't always content to wait for nature. Sometimes we build islands ourselves. In countries like Japan, where land is scarce and space is limited, artificial islands have become a necessity. 
The Kansai International Airport is a perfect example. A massive structure built entirely on an artificial island in Osaka Bay. Constructed at a cost of around $20 billion, it has withstood quakes or typhoons, though the platform has experienced long-term subsidence, serving tens of millions of passengers every year. Nature, however, always reclaims what it creates. The same new island formed by volcanic eruption near Ioto in late 2023 has already begun to vanish. As volcanic activity subsided, waves took over. By December, it had shrunk to half its original size, and by February 2024, only 25 meters remained above water. The sea had won again. In the end, Japan's islands, whether lost, born or built, tell the same story. The Earth is alive, it rises and falls, creates and destroys, constantly redrawing the boundaries of the mapped world humans consider familiar. And somewhere beneath the waves right now, another island may already be waiting to be born.